So let's talk about what to do if you need to make some changes to your meshes. So in your case, it might be that you're doing just your first couple of holes, um, as I recommended, <coughs> and you're going through the entire process and um, you're thinking to yourself, okay, when do I go back and I add my additional holes? You know, the rest of my, I've done two, when do I add the final 15? Or you might be thinking, oh, I've done all 18, I've gone into Unity and I found something wrong. I need to change something, what do I do? And this is gonna give you some theory behind that. We're a little early in the process to explain everything because you haven't seen how this all works in Unity yet, which is the next major section. But hopefully I'm gonna give you some things to think about here, which is what if I need to make some changes? And there's a couple different changes you can make here. One is, I need to add a completely new mesh. I forgot a tee box, I missed a green, um, maybe a rough, fairway, semi-rough, whatever. I need to create a whole new mesh. You're gonna have to go back and do that in Inkscape. And um, I'll explain in a minute here how that will work. Um, or another thing might be, I need to adjust the shape of a mesh. This T isn't wide enough. This green is, um, is too big. It needs to be smaller. The fairway isn't quite right. Okay. That also needs to be done in Inkscape if you're just changing the shape of something per se. Um, what if I need to adjust the terrain? For example, my green, it's too hilly. You can't put on it. I need to flatten it. Um, I need to make these bunkers deeper. Okay, the main part of the bunker. I'm not talking about the lips. I'm talking about it. When I stand in it, it needs to be deeper. Um, anything that's like when I remember we conformed our meshes to our terrain. So if you need to change that terrain, which ultimately changes the shape, okay, the undulation of your meshes, you need to do that in unity with the um, the uh, terrain shaping tools, either RAM or the native Unity tools. Okay. And I'll explain how that will work as well, more details. What about altering bunker lips? So remember, there's a bunch of OPCD tools for changing the bunker lips, the water banks, et cetera. You just need to do that in Blender. Um, no change, well, not, not change, but you need to do that in Blender. Um, and also, what if I need to adjust my vertex painting? So I told you what vertex painting is. And that's where things get a little tricky because you can actually do vertex painting in Blender or Unity. So depending on what you want to do, you could do that in two different places. Now, the important thing to understand here, and what I did not bring up is, what about the appearance of my meshes? So I put, this was a fairway here. I made this fairway. However, I mislabeled it as rough. Um, all appearances ultimately are, are controlled in, in Unity. So you can make changes to the things that what they look like and how they play. So if you want the golf ball to look like it's hitting rough or you want a pertinent area to make it look like rough, don't worry about that. That's very easy to fix in Unity. Um, we'd label those things early on just to save ourselves a lot of time later. But if you messed up one or two of those, really not a problem. So if you need to make changes in Inkscape, okay, so those first two use cases, either new mesh or you're adjusting the shape of a mesh, you're gonna have to run it all through the Clender again, okay? And that will create a new blend file. So new blend file, new shapes, that's different from the blend file you've been already been working on. So if you did anything in that previous blend file, like add a bridge or an object, or you changed your bunker lips, or you changed your water uh, lips, or you did any vertex painting, well, they're now in two different files. So any previous work you had done in those tools will be very hard to recover. It's not impossible, but it takes some advanced knowledge, which is beyond the scope of the course. Um, so my recommendation for you would be don't do a lot of work inside of Blender early on in the process. Save the shaping of your bunkers, save the shaping of your lakes, your adding your, your additional objects. And though that's a tough one, you wanna get those early on. It's they, Those can be recovered. Um, but the issue here is um, anything you do inside of Blender, when you create a new Blender file, those are hard to merge together, okay? So my recommendation would be go through the whole process. Don't spend a lot of time on your bunkers or inside of Blender, at least initially. Wait for the end to do that. Um, adjust the terrain. So if you're gonna adjust that terrain, that's pretty simple. You're gonna go into Unity and you know, you're gonna make those changes with RAM or the Unity tools, and then you're just gonna export that terrain OBJ again. 
you're going to import it um, just like we did before and then reconform the meshes. So that's not a new Blender file, that's your existing Blender file. So you're just going to re-import the train, reconform the meshes, and export those meshes to FBX again. Um, and then you will have to you're going to have to overwrite the previous XPXs, and I know you haven't seen how to do that in Unity yet, so that doesn't quite make sense yet, um, but that can be done. And now vertex painting. This is where things will get a little tricky because you guys haven't seen vertex painting inside of Unity yet in the tutorials. Um, so vertex painting can be done in Blender, which is more procedural, which means you've seen those tools, which is you highlight a shape and you say, okay, I want to vertex paint the middle of it, or you know, I want to inset it. So it's very procedural. Whereas in Unity, we can use brushes and we can kind of stroke areas that we want to change. Um, so it's different. Um, it's, I would say in Unity, it's more artistic and Blender, it's, you know, it's more procedural and mechanical in Blender. But vertex paint adjustments in Blender are okay. Um, you can do those you know, after the fact, um, as long as you don't change the mesh size and shape, because if you change the mesh size and shape, you're changing the location of those vertices. And hence, when they go back into Unity, um, uh, the, whatever you, vert painting you did in Unity isn't gonna quite probably look right anymore. Um, so any vertex painting on the same shape in Unity will be overwritten. So if you, did any, if you do any vertex painting in, in, over, uh, in Unity, and then you vert paint it again in Blender and you export it in Unity, whatever you had done in Unity for this vert painting uh, is a good chance. Well, it's definitely gonna be overwritten and or you're gonna get some odd results. So again, this goes back to the fact that you, you know, try to um, avoid doing too much Blender work, at least initially, um, but more on that as we go forward. 